Wow. Just, wow. I can't believe I actually have to do this. Listen up, guys, because you're not going to believe this. Yesterday, I was in a full-blown argument with multiple members of the Church of Jesus Yamato for six hours non-stop. Six fucking hours! Like, I mean, really? Six hours? Are you kidding me? Get a fucking life! Oh my god! These guys are like the Gundam equivalent of Twilight fans! They don't know when to shut the fuck up and give it a rest! I mean, you know me. Pointing out flaws with something like, say, the Strike Freedom and the Destiny and eventually the Impulse, the Savior, the Destroy, and the Akatsuki, that shit is fun to do because that shit is also harder to prove wrong. But when plot comes involved, oh boy, go get some popcorn and soda because you're gonna need it for how long you're gonna be arguing with them about that. And some people think they're not even real, that they're just a bullshit myth. But no, they're real all right. Even my friends, they bumped into them a couple of times too. Not too long ago, my friend Vert344 actually PM'd me after a hilarious encounter with a Jesus Yamato cultist on Dynasty Warriors Gundam 3. Vert, if you're watching this, I hope you don't mind, but I want to show them that message you sent me. Here's this message right here. It says, By the way, I wanted to tell you, I ran into a Jesus Yamato cultist today on Dynasty Warriors Gundam 3. He got so angry when I told him how bad the strike freedom was and ran me down making some 10 odd excuses about how I was wrong. So I told him to look up your rant and he said he already called you out and called bullshit on you and your rants because they're lies and you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Poor guy is so dead. There you go, a witness testimony. And as you can see, these guys know who I am. They are well aware of me and they do not like me at all. So there's your proof. These motherfuckers are very real and they make legitimate Gundam C Destiny fans look horrible. If you are a legitimate Gundam Seed Destiny fan, a fan that actually knows of all of Seed Destiny's major problems, knows of all the bullshit, deals with all the haters, and still keeps her head up high and says, I am a fan of Seed Destiny, I applaud you. Being a real fan of Gundam Seed Destiny is extremely hard. You have to put up with haters, UC fanboys, wing fanboys, and are constantly reminded about Seed Destiny's flaws over and over again, even sometimes from me. But I never troll legitimate Seed fans. All I do is merely put them to the test to see how much they acknowledge Seed Destiny's flaws. And if they tell me they're okay with it, I give them full respect because they damn well deserve it. But if you're still able to look past all of its flaws and still love the anime for what it is good for you i applaud you for that but yeah getting back on topic what could we have possibly been arguing back and forth about for six hours straight that dragged on for that long well the topic at hand was the freedom versus impulse battle in gundam c destiny and more importantly kira's third and final jesus yamato moment for those watching who have no idea why everyone keeps calling kira yamato jesus yamato all the time i'll Allow me to explain. Throughout the course of Gundam Seed, and it carried on into Destiny, Kira Yamato miraculously came out alive not once, not twice, but three fucking times in a row out of situations that are physically impossible for human beings to survive through with zero explanation given as to how he managed to live. So, the only logical conclusion that people tried to come to is that Kira is some kind of divine figure that can't die, so they call him Jesus Yamato. So then, of course, came along the fanboys who created what was called the Church of Jesus Yamato, which is basically a cult fan base of Gundam Seed Destiny fanboys of the highest order that try to preach the gospel among other legitimate Gundam fans, not just from Seed, but from Universal Century, Wing, X, G, Double O, H, Turn A, all that shit. They go around preaching the gospel about how Kira Yamato is the greatest Gundam pilot ever, how he's the greatest character in all of Gundam history, about how the Strike Freedom is the greatest Gundam ever made, hands down, and about how every other main Gundam protagonist and main Gundam of each other Gundam series is complete shit and totally inferior to him. They're right, you're wrong, end of fucking story. Forcing their opinions on everyone else. Yeah, I think there's a name for something like that. I think it's called fascism? Yeah, I believe that's what it was 
was called. And the really sad part about all this? The argument that we were having about the Freedom vs. Impulse and Kira's third Jesus Yamato moment? This argument is still going on! They just don't want to fucking quit! So you know what? I'm gonna put all of this to rest with visual evidence this time, so that way they cannot say shit and you guys will be my witnesses. This bullshit is about to end right here, right now. So everyone take your seats and listen up, because I'm going to be showing you all one of the most bullshit battles I have ever seen in Gundam, the freedom versus the impulse in Gundam Seed Destiny. The first problem with this battle is the reason why Kira Yamato ended up losing to the impulse in the first place. Kira Kira had more than enough potential to kick the living shit out of the Impulse 50 times over. The Freedom has an end jammer canceller. The Impulse does not. There was no fucking competition as to who had the better Gundam. Not to mention Kira also having a shitload more experience as a pilot. I mean, after all, he is the ultimate coordinator. Even if Shin is the main character, or at least at the time still, the balance of power between these two was unquestionable. There was no excuse for Kira not to win. Now right here is where I got my first response back from them. They claim that Kira Yamato lost because he was a pacifist and he does not target cockpits, therefore he was not fighting seriously. Are they telling the truth? Well, yes and no. Was Kira really fighting seriously? Hell the fuck no. Not even remotely close. Kira wasn't even fucking trying. All Kira was doing in that battle was playing a game of keep away with the impulse and sucking ass at it at the same time. Shin, however, was the total opposite. Shin was going balls out, guns blazing on Kira, and he was using strategy to keep up with him. He contemplated almost every move that Kira was gonna do since he researched how he doesn't target cockpits. I mean, look at this. See for yourself. Look at how Shin is blocking and dodging every single move Kira tries on him. Shin knows what he's doing. Kira, however, is just running away and playing keep away with the impulse like a little bitch. He doesn't even use two-thirds of the freedom's weapons on the impulse in the first place. He mainly focuses on using only the beam rifle on the impulse, and I guess occasionally he whips out the beam saber here and there, but still, he focuses on the beam rifle and nothing else. What happened to your Zephyrus rail cannons on your hips? What happened to the Bolina plus? Plasma cannons mounted on the wings! For God's sake, he doesn't even use the head Vulcans against Shin! Come on, Mr. Beam Spam, show some balls! There's a difference between being a pacifist fighter and being a fucking idiot. If someone is trying to kill you, you have the legal right to defend yourself. Lorenz Sahak from Turn A Gundam is the prime example of how to do a pacifist fighter the right way. I mean, look at Loran, for example. Loran pilots the Turn A Gundam, the most powerful gun ever created in existence. And guess what? Loran didn't have a problem kicking ass and at the same time not killing anyone. He knew that this war was bullshit, but at the same time, he knew he had to defend himself. And since he didn't want to kill anybody, he kicked ass, but at the same time used non-lethal tactics. It worked. I mean, he carried two nuclear warheads inside the Ternace chest. And did he kill anyone with them? No. Instead, he used them to save lives. But we're getting a little off topic here. The fact of the matter is, Kira has done this shit before with the Freedom. For example, the Freedom versus the Savior. We all remember what happened there. Kira entered seed mode, rushed up to the Savior, and ripped it to shreds! While at the same time, keeping the cockpit intact, leaving Athrin completely unharmed. The Savior itself was totaled, thank God, but either way, Athrin was totally fine. Kira even knows when he doesn't have a choice to kill. Berlin, the destroy gun. Him. Stella was completely out of control. Even if Shin was trying to talk some sense into her, at that point there was no stopping her. Kira knew that she had to die otherwise hundreds of thousands of people were gonna end up killed. Did Kira like killing Stella? No, but he had no choice. The point is, Kira has done this shit in the past to save himself. He had no fucking excuse not to with the impulse. Now the second part of that response. Kira never targets cockpits. Oh really now? I beg to differ. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Stop! Right there. You tell me. Where was Kira aiming with that swing? 
I don't know, it seems to be aimed towards a specific area of the mobile suit. Maybe the cockpit? Now I know a lot of Kira fanboys are gonna be anal about this, but I'm gonna clear this one up quickly. Yes, I know that incident was recycled from the Freedom vs. the Duel at Joshua. I know that. It's fucking obvious. After all, recycled animation is what Seed Destiny does best. You thought Gundam Wing's recycled animation was annoying? Watch Seed Destiny and get ready to have your fucking mind blown. But the one thing that was different about that moment is that at the last second, Kira decided, oh, I'm not gonna kill him, and then he swings downward instead of at the cockpit. But he started out going directly in for the kill, but he had a change of heart. In this case, it was clear that Kira was still going in for the kill that time. If he did do the same thing with the impulse that he did with the duel in that case, Shin would not have needed to separate. But as you could see, if Shin didn't separate right then and there, he would have been sliced in half easily. So yes, Kira still does target cockpits. It may not seem like it most of the time but he still has the balls to do it and he tried it with Shin you know what that right there was probably the one time Kira was fighting serious in this battle what did they respond with to all this some of them started going off topic and started accusing Lorenz Sehak of being a girly man and that turn a Gundam is not a real Gundam and that the strike freedom would kick its ass any day Pfft, yeah right when vaginas fly however a couple of other members came back at me and said that after the battle after Kira went through the whole Jesus Yamato moment he supposed supposedly said that he had no idea Shin was even the enemy. Which, if that was the case, honestly, that's even more bullshit. If a raging lunatic in a mobile suit is trying to kill you, I would definitely consider him a hostile threat. Even Lorenz Sahag knew that he had enemies to fight in this war. He's a pacifist, yes, but at the same time, he's not retarded. He knows. If someone is shooting at you, shoot back. You have the right to defend yourself. It's a natural reaction in human instinct. Fight or or flight. Earth to Kira. Around here is where things actually started to get a little funny, actually. Around this time is where I remember one of them calling me a heathen. <laughs> a heathen? Are you fucking kidding me? What is this, Jehovah's Witnesses? A couple of other ones started calling me a liar and said that I was making all that shit up about turn A, and then here's how it went. Did you ever watch turn A before? No. Then shut the fuck up! If you've never even watched Turn A, then why the fuck are you calling me a liar if you don't even know what the hell happened in Turn A? Picture everything I just went over being repeated for two hours. Because that's exactly what happened. I had to repeat myself multiple times, and guess what? They still weren't getting it. In the back of my mind, I was starting to think they just had to be trolling at this point. There's no way they could be this stupid. And it turns out, one of them actually was. He admitted it. So I let him go. But the other ones were still being serious. I was utterly baffled. What else is there to say about this topic? It's like talking to Fox News almost. No matter what you tell them, they turn your opinion around in their favor, no matter what the fuck you try. They just don't want to fucking hear it. But then came the second part of this argument. At the end of the Freedom vs. Impulse battle, Kira pulls off his third and final Jesus Yamato act. Like I said before, Kira did this twice in Gundam Seed. There were two other moments like this that were impossible for him to survive, but he somehow managed to live. But this one, oh my god. This one puts the other two to shame in how bullshit it was for him to live through. So let's take a look. The Archangel is descending underwater to try and escape the Minerva. The Minerva pops up a Tannhäuser shot. Hits the Archangel in the ass. Kira still fighting the impulse, but at this point the freedom is severely damaged. Its wing is blown off. Its shoulder has a hole in it. It's all kinds of fucked up. The freedom is basically backed into a corner. Shin tells Meirin to send out the sword silhouette, but instead of equipping it, he just takes one sword off of it. He rushes towards Kira, Excalibur in hand. Kira whips out a defensive stance because he knows shit's about to go down. In comes Shin. BAM! Freedom gets impaled right underneath its cockpit, breaching the Freedom's nuclear reactor, causing it to go critical, which, by the way, Shin is still impaling him at the time, and not worried about getting the fuck out of there. And since the reactor was breached and is going critical, eventually causes a nuclear explosion completely disintegrating the freedom, and somehow the impulse is still there. What happened to the Archangel during all this? Yes, they took a Tannhäuser up the ass, but at the same time, they decided to make it look like they sunk by detaching one of their other engines and blowing it up underwater to make it look like they sunk them, kind of as a cover-up. The decoy worked, and they got away, but that doesn't explain how in the holy hell Kira managed to come out of that alive. The bullshit excuse that Sunrise gave us was that Kira, at the very last second, 
second, turns off his N-Jammer canceller on the Freedom, preventing a nuclear explosion from happening, and thus his cockpit just fell in the water, which was then recovered later by Kigali, who was in the Strike Rouge, but Kira was unconscious in the cockpit. Oh my sweet Jesus, there are so many things wrong with this excuse that I don't even know where to begin. First of all, one does not simply stop a nuclear fission reaction with just the flip of a switch, especially not under circumstances such as, oh, I don't know, having a fucking beam sword shoved through it? You're seriously trying to tell me that if you take a beam saber or a beam sword of some kind, a beam blade of pure energy and shove it right through a nuclear fission reactor all the way through in one end and out the other, that the nuclear fission reaction itself can still be contained? Bullshit! It would most definitely cause the reaction to go out of control and go critical. Oh, and that's a nice end jammer canceller you got there, Kira. It did wonders for stopping that massive nuclear explosion coming from your Gundam from happening, didn't it? One of them actually said that explosion that you saw was not a nuclear explosion, because he is absolutely right. That explosion wasn't nuclear at all. I mean, did you see that thing? I mean, that explosion the Freedom made was just so tiny. I mean, it was so tiny, the shockwave pushed the Minerva back quite a bit. It was so tiny, the blast took out what appears to be easily a five mile radius. So tiny that it actually broke a hole in the cloud layer. Oh, and that's a nice mushroom cloud back there. Real touchy. Enough with the sarcasm. Of course the end jammer canceller didn't work! If it really did work, then the Freedom would've just fell into the water and exploded like a normal, non-nuclear powered mobile suit. I remember that there was this one person that made this absolutely ludicrous excuse about that massive explosion being from the Archangel getting hit by the Tannhäuser, and that the Freedom and the Impulse just got caught up in it. Okay, first of all, if that was the Archangel that caused that massive explosion, the Archangel would be blown to shit. The Archangel was still structurally intact when it went underwater. It's just just that on the way down, they took a Tannhäuser up the ass. They were damaged by it, but they didn't get destroyed by it. You could see right here, the explosion made by the Tannhäuser hitting the Archangel in the ass. That is nothing compared to the one that happened after the Freedom was impaled. The only other explosion caused by the Archangel was when they detached one of their engines and blew it up underwater. And let's take a look what that explosion looks like, shall we? Uh-huh. Okay, so... He claims that this explosion, which started underwater, engulfed the freedom and the impulse during the moment of him getting impaled, and turned into this, and was not caused by the freedom at all. Makes sense to me! Sarcasm aside, that theory is clearly out of the fucking question. So as you can see, there is absolutely no denying that the nuclear explosion was in fact caused by the Freedom's nuclear reactor getting breached and going critical. The sole fact that even the Freedom's cockpit survived the explosion is bullshit too! The nuclear reactor in the Freedom is like right underneath where Kira is sitting, and Shin took an Excalibur and literally shanked it! Kira's body was literally right in the epicenter of the nuclear blast. The cockpit should have been the first thing that was vaporized since Kira was sitting right on top of the nuclear reactor. What, is the Freedom's torso made out of admantium or something? As for you, yes you, Shin, you're in a little hot water yourself. You may have laid the smack down on Kira, but you got your own set of bullshit that needs to be discussed as well, mister. Shin also is just as guilty of surviving that blast as Kira. He was also right in the epicenter of that nuclear blast. But instead, the impulse is just all warped and melted at the end, and you see the phase shift armor is depleted. Okay, let me tell you something. Phase shift armor cannot and does not protect you against something like that. Phase shift armor is meant to protect you against projectile weapons and impact weapons. It does not protect you from beam weapons of any kind, and especially not against explosions like that. We're talking about temperatures in the Kelvins here! Shin may have been a couple of yards away from the reactor itself, but the the fact of the matter is he was still at the epicenter, the point of a nuclear explosion where the highest temperatures occur. There was no fucking way he could have survived that, especially not at that close range. This isn't like the Strike Gundam versus the Aegis Gundam, which by the way, the ending to that battle was bullshit too, where both the Strike and the Aegis were both not nuclear powered, and when the Aegis self-destructed, it was not a nuclear blast. The explosion that the Aegis made as a result of self-destructing was nothing but a freaking speck 
compared to the one the Freedom made. So in conclusion here, Kira's reason for losing in the first place was completely half-assed, and both Shin and Kira should have been dead as shit after that blast. There was no way they could have possibly survived, and they did. And that is why the Freedom vs. Impulse battle will always and forever be complete bullshit. So there you go, guys. I've just shown you every last bit of evidence against their bullshit claims for this battle. I think the biggest problem with the Church of Jesus Yamato is that they automatically think everything that Sunrise says is automatically acceptable. Just because Sunrise says something doesn't mean you always have to take their word for it. Hell, as a Gundam fan from the beginning with the UC timeline, there have been moments with me where I have literally stopped and said, Tomino, what in the fuck were you thinking the prime example for this would be the first half of double zeta gundam so now if this bullshit argument somehow still goes on at least i'll have you guys as my witnesses this time here's the evidence you decide this is wacky Motor 84 peace out